Oh my gosh, welcome back to the podcast. This is Don't Blame Me with Megan Rinks. And today we have a special guest, Arden. I was almost going to say Arden. Can I say Arden Ricks or do you say Arden Rose? You can say either. Okay. I'm like, I know you on a personal level. We just talked about how I know your dad's last name, your dad's <laughs> first name. So yeah. I'm like, I mean, I know you, you're still in my, do you know you're still in my phone as Arden, Arden motherfucking Rose? That's great. Yeah. I'm not sad about that at all, actually. Oh, thanks for being here in my house. Yes. Oh my gosh. You've got such a beautiful home. Thank you. I. This is the only part that's clean. Well, I, when it is all clean, I want to come over and see all of it. Yes. Yeah, that so room cool. is, they know, th- this room is like the disaster. Why? It's what is it? Every PR package I've ever received. Oh no, I can't. <laughs> and I've like uh-uh. half opened and then decided I don't want them. But I'm like, I'm just going to leave it in there until someone else who yeah. doesn't live here is going to be able to take care of it. Yep. I live in a one bedroom apartment. So it's, I feel you it's piled up. Oh, My closet gosh. is a disaster zone. Oh, see, I like to stack. I need, I need a whole other room just to put crap in or in this case, two other rooms to put crap. in. I wish I could have that. Like I need to not live in Venice. Yeah. Move over here. Like, I need to go somewhere else. Uh. Well, I know, I know. We'll plan it out. You can be my real estate agent next oh, year. I would love that. I could drive you around in my mom car. Yes. I can bake cookies, water oh. bottles, tea, yes. orange slices, Capri Suns. Oh my God. Like fuel me. left over here. <gasps> we have Beverly Wood. I love it. Can you wear like a really cute little like pinstripe suit yes, as well? Yes, very Hillary Clinton. Mm. Can I wear a wig or like a chignon? 100%. <laughs> yes. only, only if you keep saying chignon. Is that how you say it? Chignon. Chignon. In, in need. In chignon. Oh, oh my God, I love it. Well, welcome back to the podcast, guys. Um, If you have not heard before, this is my advice podcast where you guys call in, you leave voicemails, you tell us about the problems in your lives, and we do our very best to fix your problems. And if you guys want to call in and leave a voicemail, the phone number is 310-694-C... You were Three. killing it. You were killing Dude, it. I was, I've never gotten it right. I got it right so once. Close. I still don't know. 310-694-0976. Oh, fuck me up. <laughs> yes. Wow. It's like I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm so don't. proud of you. It's like you host a podcast. I don't even know Mott's phone number. The other day we talked about it because no. my iCloud wasn't working. And I was like, babe, what's your phone number? And he was like, what? How do you know? And I was like, like no one remembers. Something? No, no one remembers phone numbers anymore. Yeah. He recited mine then. And I was like, oh, my bad. Oh, that's so typical. Will could probably do the same thing. Yeah. We have very similar boyfriends. Yeah. Where it's oh, like, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, you care more about this it, than I do. Oh, <laughs> okay. And you're like, huh, right. you couldn't do it. And you're like, oh, no, you can I'm an awful human. Ooh, okay, so I'm the bad one, aren't I? Love I love you. Ooh, love. Kiss, kiss, <laughs> kiss, 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 kiss. So, yeah, if you guys tweet at international calls or hop on into it. We can, well, I was just going to say that Jack is running a little bit late because he's working on Mr. Student Body President. No, because he's oh, a turd, sh- obviously. Shit. I got to respond yeah. to the email about ADR. So, guys, um, Jack is late. Bow, 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 which is fine. Mm. At least he's not sick. Is he sick this time? No. No. Well, he's, he's kind of sick. He is kind of sick. He's sick in the head. <laughs> he's obviously. sick in the head for being late. Yeah. So, obviously. Mel's here. I mean, Mel's always here, but now yeah. she gets a microphone. And Hello. when Yay. Jack comes in, we're not going to let him take over. Okay. No. He can just sit and like listen and watch. Yeah, that's what happens when you're late. Yeah, cool. that's what punishment. Happens. <laughs> he gets a detention. Yes. So, should we hop into calls? Yes, let's, let's do it. I feel like you're going to be really good at this. I'm so excited. I was excited the questions I picked for you <gasps> to do with this. You're also just going to be like, wow, Megan, these are so sexual. Because <laughs> I'm like, you're yes. fun to do with Arden. Oh, it's okay. Last time I was on a podcast, I talked all about my how I think you guys saw my giant dildo on my bedside yeah, table. Yeah, so. it was. Wow. I saw it. It was okay. What color is it? Blush colored. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. But okay. I also feel weird about fucking myself with something purple. Okay. I don't I, know. I understand. I understand. I don't know. That's too much. Okay. Let's go into a call. <laughs> hey, Megan. Uh, my name is Sarah and I'm 21 years old and I have been dating my boyfriend for a little over two years. Uh, so that being said, I have been faking my orgasms for the past two years. Uh, I know that sounds really, really bad, but, you know, obviously it just started out as just an, a few innocent fake orgasms uh, just to make him feel good about himself. But, you know, two years in, I don't really need to make him feel good about himself anymore. So, <laughs> um, so I just need some advice on to how to not obviously just stop having vaginal orgasms because he thinks I'm the unicorn and I am not a unicorn. So (laughs) anything that you you can think of onto how to not obviously just stop having vaginal orgasms 
would be really, really great because I really see myself marrying this guy and I don't want a whole life full of fake orgasms. You know, I want real orgasms. I feel like it was Rihanna or Nicki Minaj. I can't remember which one that said that nobody's got time to fake orgasms yeah. anymore. <laughs> no, no. I remember that. Do you remember, Did you ever have that part of your life? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Whoa, calling out an ex. <laughs> call, call, we'll, bleep it. we'll bleep his name. Calling out an like, ex. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know. Oh, you're like, yep. Um, I think like grand total, I came three times dating him. Oh. Grand total. Yeah. And that's like handling my own biz. A hundred percent. No, no I've, I've, I don't even have a publicly said it, but I've said it with my friends. Mots is like the first guy that I've ever not faked it with. Yeah, right? Like 100%. You find that one. That's your number one. That's why, because I wanted to date a recovering fuck boy. I'm like, I need someone who knows what the fuck he's doing. Who's like literally fucked all of the bitches. And then is like, no, I'm pretty confident in this. He'll be happy I said this, whatever. It's true. <laughs> he's a, he's like a recovering frat boy. I love it. Yeah. But he's making you come, who exactly. cares? And that's what's like, that's who I want to date is somebody who's like not like who knows what they're doing in the sense too. Because and also like, isn't ignorant of the fact that girls don't orgasm all the time. Yeah, exactly. That's the most annoying thing is when guys don't get it and then they're offended by yeah. it. It's like, it's not an offensive thing. Yeah. It's just not always as easy as pressing or three buttons. even mm. possible at all. Like I'm like, I yeah. think, I mean, Arden and I will probably recommend the same book for this, for you. This is what I would say. My mm. full blown, just like normal advice. Full blown. Full blown. <laughs> blow. I mean, opposite. Uh, not opposite. Okay. I'm trying blow, to like blow, 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 blow. I'm just thinking of Beyonce now. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Is, okay. So there's this book called She Comes First. Amazing. And literally just casually read it around him and then leave it on your bedside table, I fucking guarantee you, the cover is a papaya. Like it looks very, like- Very, very yonic papaya. It mm. literally is a pussy papaya. Yes, he's going to eat see my it. pussy papaya. Literally, like it's subliminal messaging. He's going to pick up the book and he's going to read it and he's going to have a full-blown like sexual- like Awakening. Epiphany. It's amazing. I've realized though, like, so Will's the same way. He picked it up and of course- Yeah, you know, oh, I did that to Mots too. Yes. But like not because he needed to, but no, 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 it was no, no, more no. just like- but just like, hey, why not? See. Yeah, We're and, already great at this. Yeah, let's see what else we can what do. What else can we do? And oh man, you can do some <laughs> other stuff. Yes, you can. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I think like, well, to get back to the question though, that's really tough because what you've done is tied in his ego with your orgasm. Mm -hmm. And that's a really hard thing to just break because that's, that's something you've ingrained in him that every time you have sex, if you do not orgasm or fake it, you're failing at sex. That's like the A to B yeah. problem that you've created for yourself. So I don't know if that's a thing where you have to just be fucking honest. I was never honest we just broke up and I was yeah. like, oh, finally I can come. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, it's been years. <laughs> it's cobwebs That's down there. True. Like, yeah. I think like the, if you see yourself ending up with this guy, I think, I mean, there's a part of me that I'm like, if you didn't see yourself ending up with this guy, I just be like, continue faking it until you break up and then just like never talk about it and then just start fresh with a new guy. And that's honesty right well, there. Well, yeah, 100%. Cause I, yeah. I have never like literally never told any of the guys I faked it with before that I was faking no. ever. Mm -mm. Like, even if it meant improving our sex life, I was kind of like, no, nah, too much confrontation. Just going to yeah. break up. Uh, for some reason, it was just a lot easier to stroke an ego. Completely. Or a dick. Mm. Or a then, dick. <laughs> whoa. Um, then get someone to just fucking eat me out. Yeah, exactly. You know what I but mean? Then, like, in the right way. <laughs> and going into a new relationship, then it's kind of like you're starting fresh and you can be a little more like demanding mm -hmm. and also a little bit more honest because like you're yeah. not you're not like being like, I'm so sorry I lied all of this time. Yeah. I can kind of like yeah. have this like confidence in like what I need in this. Mm -hmm. So if you see yourself ending up with him, I think Arden's right. You got to just like bite the bullet. Yeah. And just say fully, something and he'll get over it. Yeah. He will, because that's also, I mean, as he probably also, not that he knows that you're faking it, but there is, I mean, you're going to say it and I don't know how much you'll like fully, fully surprise him. Yeah. There's a suspended, um, a su suspense of belief if someone thinks that you're actually orgasming every single time, especially as yeah. a girl. Like just reading stats online, you know, that doesn't happen. Completely. So it's like, just be fucking honest about it. Yeah. And if you can't be honest about it, then just like make it work. Like start trying to actually orgasm during sex. Cause that was the other thing. Like yeah. I realized after you just tap, you were just like mentally tapping like it's out. Not happening. Yeah. I yeah. know because you get into a mental block where you're like, I know this is not going to happen. And I know mm -hmm. that this is just like, like a process that I have to go through. And then like fucking yeah. on the weekends, I can go wild mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Um, like you just need to break that mold. Cause even just like in my own head, mm -hmm. I've had that, I've had an orgasm block before. And I think a lot of oh, women do mm -hmm. yeah. where you just assume that you're not going to come. So mm -hmm. you don't even try. Cause exactly. it is physical effort. Like if you're masturbating on your own, you know that it's like, you have to get and, like yeah. pumped. You got to get fucking pumped Completely. up a little bit. Or like, I can't orgasm if I've, if I've had something to drink. I get whiskey clip. 
Oh, whiskey click. Oh, I love that. I've never heard that term. Mm-hmm. I've heard yeah. whiskey dick, but not whis- whiskey click. Yeah, unless I'm trying really hard, in which case. Like, you're like, I f- this has to happen. Yeah, but then it's like, man, I'm really, you're I'll exhausted. be sore the next morning. I'm like, it was too much <laughs> effort. God. Yeah, I know. I'm oh. like, fuck, good night's sleep. I think the other thing is too, is if you feel uncomfortable either confronting it and you also still want to end up together, I'm thinking, what if you also, if you, if you just suggest new stuff into your sex life mm-hmm. and maybe if you're reading that book and you don't want to be like, by the way, I've been faking it. If you can just, if you can get him to actually make you come, that is going to be ranked as like a gold star orgasm uh-huh. versus a vaginal one that he's going to be more inclined to do that to get you to that other one. Uh huh. So 100%. Yeah. So I think it's like, it's kind of like if you can show the difference of because like I'm sure you can't fake one as great as like your real one would actually be yes and so I think he'll try and get you to the real one yes from there because there is like there's a huge fucking difference oh there's a do you ever think about that now where you're like I don't know how I tricked so many guys into thinking I know I think I got really good at like squeezing my muscles a certain way but even that just doesn't cut it I I could never fake it with moths now like literally he big that's just nope that's a you're lying full blown your vagina is lying your vagina is lying to me (laughs) but it's also super normal so like know that like I yeah and also specifically the fact that she's saying vaginal orgasms yeah i'm like dude i can count on one hand the amount of times that's happened to me right or or like if you're gonna come vaginally i feel like there has to be some some other factor yeah there has to be some sort of like clitoral pressure other stimulation yes Mm -hmm. because there are certain like positions where it's like i can understand how that would be possible but like other times there is not enough pressure no for that to even be possible it's like you're scratching the back back of my neck and being like you gonna come and it's like, these, are, these are very far away sucking on my left nipple yeah. <laughs> this is so great for me oh hot. it happened hot. Hot. oh yes and also i don't know if your boyfriend watches porn but porn is a Ugh. huge factor in like people not understanding real <laughs> orgasm versus fake orgasm and i would recommend if porn is an issue or something that you've thought of like entertaining with your partner because also porn helps me orgasm so like sometimes it's nice to watch it if you're like so not in the mood and someone else is and sometimes it can help out or it can weird you out I've had both (laughs) I've had both where I'm like no now it just looks like organ smashing and I don't like it I don't want it so physical Mm, yeah but there's um there's a subreddit called Chick Flicks with three X's at the end. <gasps> oh, do they have plot mm-hmm. lines? Plot lines, but also it's couples. So it's like, oh. um, like people, it's Who like- care about getting each other off. Yeah, and it's like amateur. So it'll be someone like sets up their phone and it's like, like people just like, it would be like if I sent a, like a sex tape to Will or something, he oh, would then, oh, oh, like oh. it's couples that think that shit's hot and would like post it online anyway. And so it's just like normal ass couples. Oh. Just like having sex. And sometimes that's Way more better. relatable. Yeah. And like, they're actually like enjoying it and it's- it's good and sometimes it's gross but sometimes it's good so I mean if you're if that's a problem because porn can sometimes be an issue yeah. with like thinking girls need to orgasm really quickly or whatever mm-hmm. videos like that are good to just like break that cycle of thinking girls like get touched on the clit and they're like mm, yeah. yeah like <laughs> girls coming from being like titty fucked yeah. and you're like Meh. I'm like stop it stop it <laughs> you are just, not no it's no. just cruel <laughs> you're ruining teenage boys seriously yeah. I do believe uh, mm-hmm. I feel like we definitely solved your problem Mel is like, move on. (laughs) Time to go. Stop. Time to go, girls. Okay. On to the next call. Hi, Megan. So I don't know if this question is related to sex, but kind of, but I'm 15 and I'm kind of nervous for my first gynecologist um, uh, appointment and like my first pap smear and everything. So I would like to know like your first experience and everything because I'm so scared. Oh, that's so sweet. I feel like you're going to be better at answering this than me. Why? Do you get major anxiety around gynecologists? Um, Megan may or may not have not gone to a gynecologist since she was 16. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm 24. <laughs> it's okay. I went to one like a like a year and okay, a half ago. Okay, can you give me and this girl advice? Because I am her, but I'm not 15. Yes, uh, 100%. Well, so I guess... For me, I hate doctor's offices. I was just talking about this with the the ladies around this table before we started doing this. I hate doctor's offices. So, like, I 100% understand. I'm not really worried so much about, like, the examination. I've realized that, like, the weirdest things make me uncomfortable. Like, the thought of, like, should I shave my pubic hair? Yeah. Do I go on my period? Like, these random things. And then I realized this person has seen so much snatch in their yeah. life. <laughs> they don't give a fuck what yours looks like. They're just there for you. It's like looking at a finger for them. They're yeah. like, oh, great finger. Move on. Wow. Wait, what? Can you describe to me what a gynecologist appointment is like? 
Um, last time I went, I didn't have to get a pap smear, which was nice. What do they do? Is a pap smear that like weird, like, like tongs they stick? It's just a swab situation, but How they, big they is do the swab. The, the swab is like a long cotton like what, swab. Like what they did for my nose when I got my nose done. Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. Same thing. Yes, because I watched wow. those videos and I know exactly what you're talking about. It's like a medical swab. Wow. Okay. So it's not a big deal. The only thing that's even remotely uncomfortable, they don't like poke you or prod you or anything. They just have these things called Scapul- sca- speculum. No, I, speculum. Speculum. That's speculum. What, it was. what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So it, I think I went like as they were like kind of open you up because they want to be able to swab. Oh, would like, you make a noise? I'm sorry. I keep spoiling this. I went, oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> In that voice, like I did, not. and my gynecologist just laughed. Like she was just like, "Okay," but it was my first time ever seeing her because I was like, I got paranoid about Pap smear stuff, so I was like, yeah. "I just gotta go do it." So I just went to someone in Santa Monica, Zoc wow. it, and I was like, "I'm just gonna fucking do it and not even think about it. I'm just gonna do it because sometimes you just gotta like put something Bite in your calendar bullet. and just not think mm-hmm. about it, just like go." And I, the first thing that I said when I sat down was like, can you make sure, like, you're not going to poke me with anything, right? <laughs> like, I don't want to get poked. I don't care if, I don't care what else you do with me. Just like, fucking me. punch me if you want. I don't want to get poked with In, anything. like, the labia? Yeah, I don't like, want to get poked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to get my, like, cervix numbed or whatever. Like, I don't want any needles up in my snatch. Like, I just leave it. Leave it. Um, so, yeah, it's not, none of it's painful. I guess the biggest thing is just, like, uncomfortability Mm -hmm. like if you're nervous about it you're gonna be nervous about it but if you're just like this is something that's essential to my health something that I need to do and I need to get over it so that I could be a healthy happy human with a healthy like happy vagina and like Mm -hmm. not worry about problems then you just gotta like greater than less than would you rather like something come up that's scary later on or get it over with and feel like healthy yeah you know? That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And they're really fast too. Yeah. Oh, it's so quick. Like it's so quick. It takes less than 10 minutes. Really? Yeah. Really? It's yeah. so fast. And that's the other shocking thing. They're not going to like, like get you ready or anything and be like, okay, hon, are you ready for this? No, they're just like, okay, well, here we go. Because yeah. oh, oh, in the movies, you're literally there like naked in a gown mm-hmm. for like three hours no. waiting it's for your gynecologist. So fast. No. It, and like, if they are, give them a bad review on Yelp. Yeah. Because yeah. that is not how it should be. Yeah. No. Like the last time I went, I was like, well, the first time I should say, the first time I went, I was like, oh, that's it. And it was like, I didn't even realize it was over. <gasps> yeah. It's done. No. It's yeah. so quick. You hype it up in your brain. And also you're right. In the media, they make it like this thing where someone's like sitting in the stirrups and like, yeah. mm-hmm. so nervous. I remember before I went, I watched a Mad Men episode yeah. where that was happening. Like she well, was trying also to get that was the, in the six, exactly. Or 50s, yeah, exactly. It was like 50s, 60s, <laughs> like early 60s. I don't know, but that's like they they make it a bad situation because it was bad back then. But now oh. it's like, and that's how most media is. They just make it like this uncomfortable thing. But it's like, fuck off, you male writers yeah. that wrote like a sad gynecologist room. Like, oh. fuck off. This is for my vaginal health. Well, Not I guess yours. I should go. Yeah, you should me go. and this caller. Caller, please go. Because yeah. it's just worth it. Although you're 17, you don't need to get a pap smear until you're a little bit older. But. You have to start going when you're sexually active, right? Yeah. I is remember I just right? lied all yes, through high school. Yes, you should be sick. Oh, yeah, right. you should go. Okay, well, I went when I was 20. Especially so. like yeah. getting STD tests and stuff too. Right. Oh, oh I did yeah. do that though. Yeah. Because when I went to Planned Parenthood for my birth control, I had to get an STD test. Oh. On to the next call. Hey, Megan. So I am 21 years old, and I have kind of a big one for you. Um, so my boyfriend is going to be going to prison in 30 days. I know that sounds crazy. So a little bit of context. Um, he sold kind of a lot of drugs, um, in his past. And this happened before I knew him. Um, and he went through the court process for about a year and a half. And I met him kind of, um, halfway going into that and so we've we've been together for a year and a half and he's been waiting sentencing for a long time and he finally got sentenced so he's going to be doing six months in prison and then six months in a prison rehab um and it's just kind of rocking the world because i've been living with him for about a year now um and he's a completely different person he has not touched any drug he doesn't drink anymore but he still has to obviously suffer the consequence. And I am just kind of going crazy with like grief, I guess. And like, I just feel like I'm, I don't know what to do and I don't know how to comfort him. And I don't know what to do for myself because I'm going to be all alone for a whole year and I love him and I want to stay with him, but I'm just kind of really lost. And I don't have a lot of girlfriends to talk to this about. So I figured I would ask you, so if you have any advice, would really appreciate it, and I won't blame you. I just want her to move in with me. Dude, right? I want her to come and live with us. Wow. That's 
I will say, surprisingly, I've never been in this situation before. I, yeah, shockingly, <laughs> shockingly, I've never enough. had the love of my life go to prison. No, I've dated a lot of drug dealers, but not once <laughs> did I ever date them when they actively had to serve time. But, oh my God. <sighs> Fuck. I mean, here's what I would say as like, I like the prison shit. That's intense. I would say date like, <laughs> like just like have to be real with you. Fucking intense. I've dated ex like druggies or like users kind of a thing. And the thing I'll say is like someone being clean for a year in the scope of everything is not that long of a uh-uh, time. Uh-uh, uh-uh. So I think like you, no matter how much you love him and all of that stuff and want to support him and be there for him through him going through all of this stuff, you need to, cause you're also young. Like this time where he's, he's doing his time. Like that needs to be a time for you to like, just live your life. Yeah. Figure out what you want. Yeah. Because I don't, you don't want to be that. Like, I'm not saying don't like wait for him, but don't like let life pass you by. Yeah. If you have any sort of inclinings or feelings about like, either wanting to like break up or even just like not visit for a little while. Like don't make this whole year about him because he needs to make this year about like himself. Yeah. And don't go pining. Yeah. Don't don't pine. No, because it's, that's like, it's a, it's a fucking intense thing, but like, that's like a personal growth thing that he has to go through. Yeah. And so, cause you were right. I mean, you're honest. You said he has to suffer the consequences of his past and that's true. And he's going to have to go through a very rough time. Prison is not a fun time. Yeah. Arden's been, (laughs) listen, (laughs) I just, I conceal all my teardrop tattoos at all times. It's good. Kat Von D tattoo cover. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. She does a good one. Um, yeah, no, I, wait, did she say that she'd been dating him before she knew all this shit? No, no. after. And she knew going into a relationship that all this stuff was going on. You were an edgy lady. Yeah, You're I was going like, in. You got some kinky shit that you, you attracted like. some bad shit. Yeah. God. I mean, that's interesting. I mean, if you really love him and you think he's a nice guy and you don't think that like there's anything behind this that would worry you, then I understand like being excited to see him. But I think the problem is that you're going to make your whole life about him for a year and like he's going to be away. And, and then, he can't make it all about you for a year. No. It's not reciprocated because no. he's literally in jail. Yeah. And you don't want to be in emotional jail. No. While he's gone. True. Ooh. See what I'm saying? Very, very true. I don't know. It's like being in purgatory. So it's yeah. like just don't do not do it to yourself. You're so young. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing. I'm like, we uh, like you said We've all dated a drug dealer. Yeah. You don't do <laughs> true. <laughs> like you don't need I've dated enough for the room. <laughs> but I mean, like, yeah, no, it's like there's something I also would say, like, not oh God, I feel like every time a caller comes in, I'm like automatically being like, there's something wrong with you. There's not anything wrong with you. But I yeah. think like knowing that you're gonna date, like I had a friend who went on a date with like a guy who like a first date and he told her on the first date, it was like, by the way, um, I have to tell you this because like my counselor's making me tell people I'm going on dates with, but like I'm currently up for a sentencing for like, I'm gonna go to jail. I've been convicted for a crime, but like they're like deciding my sentencing. And my friend like went on a first date with a guy and didn't go on a second date. So I think for you, I don't know if you were friends with him before or if you met him, but if you're consciously like going to go out with somebody after you've found out all of this stuff that they're in the middle of. Mm -hmm. I think that's something like for you, are you like looking to be a part of like, like, you know, like those people who like love to fix people. Mm -hmm. I'm like, is that kind of like, yeah. And I wonder if like, is, do you feel like you've kind of like gotten caught up in that whole thing? Or the idea of making him like, um, like a better person at the end of it. And I think probably also what you've done is something that we've all fallen into Mm -hmm. where our boyfriends or our significant others are our best friends. Oh, yeah. Because I know I'm like that. Mm -hmm. Will's definitely my best friend. And I don't mind it because he's also not going to prison. But, uh, (laughs) but, well, as far as I know, that'd be kind of hot. But, uh, but uh, no, for Will to go to prison, he'd have to do something fucking nuts. Dude, it would be, no, he'd have to do something really smart. Like he'd have to like Pentagon hack some shit. Ooh, like whistleblower Yeah, I don't see him robbing anything or using anything any sort of physical force <laughs> definitely not i feel bad because i feel like you made him your best friend and also you don't have a lot of girlfriends mm-hmm. as you've said and so you have no support outside of this person that's going to be gone for a year like yeah. you gotta find i know it's like a tough thing to say but you gotta find outside support that's not that person yeah because he you're gonna get a skewed view of reality through that through and through and and it's gonna be really hard to make an educated decision or an unbiased decision about your relationship if the only person you're going to for advice is a person who benefits mm-hmm. from you staying with him. Yeah. Like you gotta find someone else that can give you clarity. I guess that's us. Well, no, <laughs> but, completely. But I was also gonna say, both you and I, like until like the last like ye- like 
two years or so, this relationship that I'm currently in is the first relationship I've been in where I've had friends who are girls. Yeah. Like both same. you and I both were very much like the dating the guy. He's like, Mats is still my best friend. But yeah. like the previous guys both of us have dated, it was like those were the only people really in my life. Yes. Was that so was it. true. So, so true. I was in these pretty like I'm not saying a relationship is toxic but it's impossible exactly you're saying it's impossible to know because the only people who you talk to are the people who are in your really like who is in your relationship and that's too close too close to make a call yeah and it's also it's, it's hard for you to kind of understand mm. exactly like the scope of like everything in perspective of like your whole world but then mm-hmm. also kind of getting some outside opinions and if you ever it's able you're able to validate your feelings because Mm -hmm. like you don't have to squash stuff and you can go to friends and talk about other things Mm -hmm. and you need it like as I've gotten older because we are the same Mm -hmm. we were on the same fucking life path where it was just like I love it (laughs) yeah but it's true like Mm -hmm. and also you know it took us a while to find girlfriends that we like completely so that's the other thing like you gotta take some time to find Mm -hmm. the people that you like and not feel pressure to to just try and like people yeah no don't accept shitty friends oh don't ever do it so bad it's not worth it so not worth it it's such a drain Mm mm-hmm so just like find the people that you like. I mean, it doesn't even like, you know, it doesn't have to be your boyfriend all the time. Um, and I think also Im- important to like foster relationships with other people because I don't think you should put the pressure on him during his time in jail thinking about, wow, she's at home by herself. She has no friends. She has nobody. And he's spending this time, which he should really be like working on himself, like worrying about you and mm-hmm. feeling like like he's abandoned you and all that stuff. I think the best thing you can do for both of you is to really like ha- take these, like take the year to do like separate journeys, even if it means staying together, but like really focusing on your own stuff. So yeah. he can like feel okay with that too. Love it. Best advice ever right there. <sighs> yeah. And prison yeah. changes you too. So you Dude, don't know that if was he's going to be was, the same. That is the tagline of this. Yeah. You don't <laughs> know if he's going to be the same when he gets out. So Ugh. true. So true. Yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, we'll be right back. We're going to take a commercial break because we are like a TV show, boop, but boop, boop, boop. without Kristen Bell. Boop, boop, boop. Or visuals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bigger one. This episode of Don't Blame Me is brought to you by me. Wow. It's Megan, guys. Don't worry. Still here. Haven't changed a thing. In this ad placement, we've decided to use this time to ask you guys to do me a little bit of a solid. Do us a favor. If you have enjoyed listening to this podcast, which, I mean, if you made it all the way to, like, the this ad right here, that means you've listened to, like, half of the episode. You're obviously enjoying it. And if you're enjoying it, it would mean the world to me if you left us a review on the Apple Podcast app. I mean, I mean, it's going to be a good review, guys, right? You're not going to let me down. I would love to hear um, your um, your positive remarks. Give me some validation, like I'm driving my car out of a parking garage. <laughs> validation jokes. Um, it would be great. It really helps us keep the podcast going. And more than that, it really makes me feel good late at night when I read mean YouTube comments, and then I can just go and read nice comments about the podcast. I would absolutely love it. And hey, in your reviews too, you can leave maybe what your favorite episode was, what your favorite kind of calls are, who your favorite guest was, or like what your dream guest is, or um, anything like that. We'd love to hear some of that stuff in the um, reviews. We can make it fun, make it feisty, throw a little uh, eggplant emoji. Can you leave emojis in reviews? I don't know. Maybe you can. Hey, if you can, that'll be our inside joke. And I'll know that you listened to this ad because you left an eggplant emoji. So again, if you guys could leave us some nice reviews on the Apple Podcast app, it would mean the world world to me. Oh God, Megan speak English. It would mean the world to me. So guys, this is it. I'm going to stop talking to you in this context and I'm just going to talk to you in the other context. So back to the episode. Okay, guys, we are back from the break in which everyone yelled at me for not going to the doctor. No, we love you so much. Ugh. It's not an aggressive thing. You should go for your own health. Yeah. Okay. Obviously. Well, on to the next question, which hopefully is not about doctors. <laughs> Yay. Hi, Megan. Um, my question is, how can a woman, a young woman, like 21, 22, how can she um, be more comfortable with her, like, sexual energy and being just a female. I'm 22 years old. Um, I did not lose my virginity until this past April, and I waited like four months into the relationship because I didn't want to be viewed like as easy or anything like that. So now that I'm no longer a virgin, um, I was just wondering, like, you know, right now I don't want a relationship. Um, My relationship ended a few months ago. 
but there's a part of me that was still like sex, but I feel like it would kind of be dirty if I had sex while not being in a relationship. And I'm trying to kind of get over the fact of like seeing sex as wrong or dirty and just kind of being comfortable with the fact that I do have sexual energy and that that's okay. And this is something I struggled with for a long time. And I just wanted to hear your opinion. Um, Dude, fuck. Fuck. Like, just fuck. fuck. Safely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But fuck. <laughs> but just fuck. Oh, it's so good. Girl. It's so good. Dude, just fuck. fuck all the time. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's not, and I also think there's something, I, I think there's, there's either the people who lost their virginity really young mm-hmm. and kind of did that whole thing of, like, having, like, multiple sexual partners in relationships because that's such a high school thing is to yeah. go from, like, having a boyfriend, 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 boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Or you're waiting until you're older and then it's kind of, like, you feel that weird pressure of being like well I've only ever had sex in a relationship Mm -hmm. but now I don't really want to be in a relationship Mm -hmm. but I want to have sex and that's called being grown yeah the grown-ass woman that's being an adult yeah I mean I don't know she says that well you can tell that she has like an an issue with like easiness because obviously well that's a construct for other that's something that you've heard other people talk about yes that you're applying to your own life yeah so if if you think listen if you think waiting four months is like the cutoff to being easy no I slept with Will the f- second night that I ever saw his face. Oh, one, so yeah. like no pressure. And now we've been in a three year relationship. He doesn't think I'm easy. Yeah. And I'm also kind of a believer. It's, it doesn't really matter when you sleep with somebody. I think it matters how you, your energy go, which I hate energy. You're like energy oh. going into that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So if you're going into something with the mentality of like, this is a one night stand and you hook up with someone like, for, like literally who you meet that night at a bar. And that's, that's what you're putting out that you want Mm -hmm. I that if you're but if you're if you've gone on like six dates with somebody or you've gone on one date with somebody and you had dinner and went to a movie and like you hook up afterwards Mm -hmm. it just has to be like what you're looking for and you put that energy out way more than you think that you do and also I find a lot of girls like it's this whole thing of being like you don't want to be perceived as easy because who calls other girls easy girls like so true and also I just want to say as somebody who like like there's this weird thing like when you're younger and either you're not having sex or you're like awkward and ashamed the amount of girls that I called sluts when I was like 14 yeah and that guilt that you feel when you're suddenly like understanding like oh I want to have sex but damn Am I eating my own words because I've talked shit about other people like this? You're eating your own dick. Yeah, you're eating your own, you're sucking your own dick. Mm. Ugh, just do it. But that's what I would say is like, don't, I think you kind of need to, if you've been that judgmental person to other people, accept the fact that that is just something that you went through and like judging other people for doing that. And you can come to your own like forgiveness of yourself for saying that. And that doesn't mean that you're a bad person, Mm -hmm. but it just means that like we grow up ignorant of like that kind of stuff. And we judge people and you don't have to, it's not being a hypocrite. So I think like take over. I mean, that's also me just like pretend like implying that I think that's what you're feeling. So I'm sure a lot of yours, your kind of hangups on sex are cultural. Mm -hmm. Just spend some time on the internet. Yeah. Like if you just spend a Little, City. Yeah, like, literally, I yeah. swear to God, just like opening your mind up to as weird as it sounds, like sexualized media has mm-hmm. made the way that I view sex so different and like so benign. I mean, I've said this in videos before and like I've gotten kicked back for it, but like my virginity was not something special. Mm-hmm. Like sex was not something special to me until I found someone that just made it fucking awesome. Yeah. So, like, you know, don't make it, don't hype it up to be this like big moral mm-hmm. compromise you're making where you're having to split your spirit and your body. Just like enjoy it. It, you know what yeah. I mean? It doesn't have to be this whole like severance of of anything. You can just enjoy sex and also enjoy your life or feel like you're a, a morally awesome person. It doesn't have to be, it's not mutually exclusive. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't carry the weight with each person that you sleep with. Mm-mm. Like the person that you end up with, that rela- that sexual relationship is obviously going to be held differently than like a one night stand. But that doesn't mean that one is good and one is bad. Yeah. Like you can have a sick ass one night stand yeah. that you're like, whoo, that was amazing. He was psycho, but he's it, amazing. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like you don't ever have to go back to that person no but like if they're amazing you had a great time you mm-hmm. go home great experience write it down in your journal wonderful yeah you know take don't, control of your sexuality and your like sexual experience and that whole part of your life because if you just let it be controlled by the people that you're dating you're not gonna have fun Mm-mm. like you're not gonna and you're not gonna i don't know it's like go to baskin robbins taste all the flavors yeah <laughs> taste all of, i mean also get tested get tested as well taste and test taste and test oh yes oh wow what a good philosophy <laughs> We would never get this question from a guy. No. And, and I think that's a, a shame. And mm-hmm. it's a stupid double standard because it's like, it's like a point of pride for a lot of guys like mm-hmm. that you've slept with 
lots of people and you've had casual sex. So it's a bummer that there's such a, that it's so like one sided. Mm -hmm. And I feel like women should feel just as empowered about this as men do. Yeah. Right on. And Jack, also, a feminist. I love it. A, a true feminist. A true feminist. Honestly, the ideal feminist. Well, that's like girls, girls, I, every girl I know will like, round their number down and every guy rounds their number up that's so true like that's a hundred percent it yeah i think just go for it and kind of i think there's there should be no shame in it and it's the same thing that i say with anyone who's getting like not even like saying that you're getting teased but anyone who feels insecure about anything the time that people are going to judge you is when you show that you're insecure about something right okay on to the next call Hi, Megan. I'm 20, and I've been in a relationship for two years off and on, and right before him, I was in a long-term relationship that lasted all through high school with this guy. And um, whenever we broke up a few times, I would end up going back to that guy, and uh, I haven't seen this guy for over a year now, and I'm just wondering is there any ways to help me forget him or put him out of my mind? It's so bad. I now even have um, dreams sometimes about him and it's just starting to kill me. I still miss him and I really don't want to. So could you please help me with this? I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. You got to break up with a current boyfriend. Like there's no way. Yeah, have you you told the current boyfriend that you're dreaming about your ex-boyfriend? Yeah, and if you're having, like, conscious and subconscious thoughts about Mm -hmm. another guy, like, I, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I've, I've definitely dated guys and then, like, still, like, thought about an ex or whatever but then for me that was kind of the telltale sign to be like wow we should break up if i'm like romanticizing a relationship i had forever ago that yeah. ended yeah. and i'm like not then i'm not mentally present in my current one yeah no i agree with you wholeheartedly it's well it sounds like that you know the first love thing kind of uh, shot her mm-hmm. really really hard it does like it it can get you sometimes like you idealize someone because you're young and in love and the first one and mm-hmm. it's exciting and whatever and then when you break up and you get back together it's all drama and it's exciting but like that's not a healthy relationship and it never will be and like the fact that you've tested it out and tried it so many times just to test the fact that you keep saying I'm done with this yeah mm-hmm. like you should know I, I 100% agree with you that you shouldn't be with your current partner if you're mm-hmm fantasizing I'll use that word yeah. fantasizing about your previous relationship um but you should maybe think a little bit about where you hold value in your relationships if you are still looking at this guy this past guy as someone important in your life yeah I think there's also something that only comes with time for me I put so much on like grow like just even honestly for years my first boyfriend and my first love was the most that was always going to be like, I don't know, like the top. But then it wasn't until like Mods and I started dating that I'm like, wow, it's not your first love who matters the most. It's the last one. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with like losing your virginity. It's not the guy you lose your virginity to or the girl. It's the person who's the last person that you like commit to being like, this is the only one I'm going to sleep with kind of thing. Like Mm -hmm. that's, but that's something that like, I, I think until it probably took like, years and years and years for me to stop because I would compare every guy I dated not to the guy I dated previously but like my first love kind of thing and I think that's totally normal to kind of always compare that to those like that first rush of like feelings and physical stuff and all of those things Mm -hmm. but it's I think it's the last one who's far more important and you'll know like you'll know when you're suddenly like oh you're not gonna have to consciously not think about no like do you think Mm -mm. about the last time you thought about like in a sexual way but think about how much you used to think about like in a sexual way like oh "Oh, well that's but exactly and I think about that I'm like I don't think about the guy I lost my virginity to or my first love who were the same person literally ever but every other relationship I was in that it would still be in the back of my mind because I was like a comparative list almost yeah yeah, I don't know. I think you just need to do some soul searching here. I don't think that's going to work out for you. I also love that you're Southern. I heard that accent. I heard that too. I heard that accent. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think you need to, I think it's time as well. And be I think you're single right. for yeah. a oh, while. Yeah. Just be single. Because then I think the whole process of like mourning a relationship, especially when you've gone back over and over and over again, you've never fully gotten over it. No. It's like putting a band, it's like putting a, ba- like a, like not a real bandaid on something and then and expecting, then why the is this scab. not healing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like getting a yeah. zit and just picking on it and be like, why is this not going away? Like, yeah, because you won't stop fucking yeah. bothering it stop or going back to it. <laughs> exactly. Just fucking leave it alone. Mm-hmm. So I would try that because I think then you'll be able to look at it 
more clearly and see his flaws more and you'll romanticize it a little bit less. Yeah. Maybe take some melatonin. No, don't take melatonin. That makes my dreams worse. Ooh, yeah. Take like some Benadryl. Don't dream mm-hmm. about him anymore. Or just like watch Game of Thrones before you go to bed. Sorry, I just got to think about the guy's perspective on this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't agree. She should just dump him right away. Mm. I think communication in a relationship is important. And even though this is a really difficult subject, I think it's important to say like, hey... I can't stop thinking about my previous boyfriend what? because no. you might be able to get to the bottom of something there. Mm, because there you're might saying be, it might be a problem with them. Like yeah, they need to communicate there might be about something, something. There might be something going on that they might be able to have the opportunity to work through. You're suggesting just breaking up with them like, like just out of hand. And I don't know if that's the best move. Because, you know, there might just be something going on in your... Listen, the grass is always greener a lot of the times when you're in a relationship and you can only remember, like, the positive things about things and you forget all the flaws. And mm-hmm. right now you're with this currently flawed person because we're all flawed. Maybe mm-hmm. you just need to work through the flaws. I'm not saying that's the solution, but if you're unwilling to talk to them and you're just going to break up with them, I don't know, it feels a little cruel. At the very least, I think it's worth a conversation. I do, I do understand like opening a dialogue and if it ends in a breakup, then you know how it was supposed to end even in, but just don't start it with, Hey, so I've been fantasizing <laughs> about my I ex. Gonna say, I <laughs> what would like you do if a girl up more problems. said that to you? Because also I think there's something with, if you're, if, if she's hung up on like an ex and not problems in her current relationship, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if that, like, I don't know if you'd manifest your problems in your current relationship with comparing them. If this is more about, if it's not about a problem with her and her boyfriend, and she's saying that she can't stop thinking about her ex, for me, that just feels like you're putting a guy in a position of being like, okay, make me want you more than I want my ex. And that for Ooh. that to me just then ends up putting it in like a guilty situation Ooh. of him being like, no, I can do I'm better. I'm not good enough. I can improve. Yeah. And she, cause she's not, it's like not giving any criticism to their current relationship. And the only thing is, is like, you're just not really enough for me, but like, let's keep trying it. And I feel like that just puts the pressure on him to just like, that's so much Cause that's not like that. Like, how do you fit? There's nothing to fix. There's nothing like to do because she doesn't have an issue in their current relationship. Her issue is he's not this other guy. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I wish they could see us sharing. The, I know it's really cute. The way, like the way I would respond to that is, uh, first of all, if I was the boyfriend, I would rather some, I would rather have a, a candid conversation where it's just like, I don't feel the way that I felt in previous relationships as opposed to just being broken up with blind. Mm. A. Like and, give a reason at least. And B, mm. I agree that there should be <laughs> they're taking a photo. I believe that there should be some like soul searching going on because I think it's important to like what is it about this other guy mm. that's so like transfixing you? And yeah, then maybe what get to the it? bottom of that and then be like, you know, I wish our relationship had more of fill in the blank and then have that conversation. I think there's a way to do this delicately. Um, but again, I just think throwing the baby out with the bathwater, we're just so like, well, I'm fantasizing about my ex. Therefore, my current boyfriend it does isn't cutting it for me. So we have to break up. Right. It's a little too black and white for me yeah. personally. Yeah. Oh, my God. What would you do, though, if like a significant other told you that they were like did, just said that to you, though? Cause that's my thing is like, I take that from like my perspective. I would, I would rather someone break up. I would rather have someone be like, I don't know if it's really working between us. And I, if I asked like what was going on and they were like, I just like, I'm, I don't think I'm over my ex. And then I would get to make the, do you know what I mean? That's really common. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah, I know what you're saying. I, I probably, I don't know. I'm very revenge driven. So <laughs> that's what, in my head, I'm, yeah, I'm like, I'm, oh, so I would do like, something that's bad. That's what I mean. I'm far too much of a cunt. If you give me that knowledge, I'm like, well, I can finish the bitch. Like, <laughs> like do you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, don't give me that power. Right. Like, don't tell me you're still hung up on your ex because I'm going to hang your ex. Like, I was thinking where I was going like, to like, I was about to say, I was about to go <laughs> no. in deep. Like, I was about to like, ooh. Because I would feel less than. Me too. Then, like, that would fuck me up for all of my future relationships. I think if someone told me that they were still hung up on their ex, I'm like, okay, well, there's nothing I can do. That's on you. This has nothing to do with like me being the issue. Mm -hmm. But if you're going into a relationship and you're like, this isn't working for me because this is what I had and this is what I liked. And you're just like, great. So you're comparing me to somebody who I'm nothing like. And Mm -hmm. now I feel super shitty and like, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. Cause I think if it's like, if, if, 
I mean, she was like fantasizing about like having like, com- like really like open, like communication. Like, I think that would be different than <laughs> I just like, love do you know what I mean? open communication. I, just, like, I really miss how much you would talk to me about your feelings. <laughs> but I think if you're just romanticizing like a-, a guy and like how you felt for them in general, expecting, telling someone else that like you want them to make you feel the way you felt about that person. Like that's like, I feel like that's just, that's way meaner. Mm-hmm. Would I think you it want depends. A, would you want someone to tell you? Yes, I would want someone to tell me because yeah, I, think I think it depends. Because I, I mean, also I have the confidence that I would be like, okay, this isn't so much about me. See, that's the thing. It's yeah. about their their people are, get hung up on their exes. That happens, and it, for me, I would look at it as an opportunity to be like, okay, well, what is it about that relationship that you're longing for? And maybe we can, I can try to, you know, work together to fill that void. Um, and then if not, then okay, then we go our separate ways. But I would much rather know that than to be broken up with blind. Well, I think after, I think it's like the six month period in most relationships where it's like the shininess has worn off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then that's kind of when it sets in of either like this is worth pursuing for longer or it's not. Mm -hmm. But I think that's just, yeah, being conscious of that. And also like you're, this is also something like you can, which I had a hard time understanding. You can break up with somebody or end something with somebody, even if they're not a terrible person. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Like you don't have to villainize no. everyone that you end up not, not vibing with. Cause that's yeah. it's all it is. Or sometimes. feel guilty of being like, wow, I just don't, this is just not, there's nothing like wrong with you. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like really a major issue here. It's just not, I'm not really feeling mm-hmm. this anymore. And that's yeah. also so okay. The amount yeah. of times I felt guilty about like if I literally would date someone that I'm like, I just think they're kind of boring now. Yeah. And like now I feel like an asshole because I'm a terrible person because I'm like- You so don't have to. No. It doesn't have to be every time you break up with someone, it doesn't have to be like some big dramatic mm-hmm. thing. It they don't have to be going to jail. No, no, no. They don't have <laughs> they to be going, going to jail. jail. You don't have to be fantasizing about your ex. It can literally just be like, we're not vibing. So yeah. it's fine. It's fine. And like, it doesn't mean that you hate that person or that you need to like smear that person Completely. in any way. It just means like, we're just, we're going to go Two our different ways. Piece. Yeah. Yeah. We're coming to the end. We have a producer's corner. This week is a little different because, uh, no, no, no. Because uh, what's special about this week's producer's corner is we have some follow up calls, <gasps> and I wanted to highlight some of the follow up calls that we got. So, really? Yeah. From previous callers. Hi, Megan. I'm 19 years old, and I just wanted to call and like check in, I guess. I listened to your podcast about like titty fucking and. I am also part of the Itty Bitty Titty Committee with ABs here, and I can say that, like, I don't know if I guess this counts as titty fucking, but I guess it's, like, what I would do in a titty fucking situation is that, like, when I would go down on the boy, I would, like, graze my boob over as in I'm, like, going up and down with my mouth, I would use my boobs as well. So I was just letting you know about how little titties can titty fuck. <laughs> Wait, where is your body? Is it this way? Just, like a I body roll? Like, how? No. I don't know how you're doing that. Oh no, it's like. I want to. I want oh, to. I, I want a live up demonstration. Call to this call. <laughs> Did she send a video demonstration? <laughs> wait, it doesn't have to be with wait, her voice. No, you're not going to use a knitting needle. <laughs> That's disgusting. Uh, Don't do not that ruin to my that knitting, knitting needle. needle. She'll I do can't something look. with her mouth, and then when she's like in between, I can't look. I can't she's look. taking a breath. Like that. Yeah. And do that. That's what she's saying. I'm wait. One more time. Wait. Stay there. Do it again. Come on. Explain it. Explain it. Jack, it's for content. It's, it's Jack, for fun. It's promo. No, absolutely. Please, not. please. You're gonna titty fuck that. You're not gonna needle? titty fuck it. So Jack has. Well, Megan has these like foot long pink. Okay. I'm going to boomerang it. You only got a little bit of time. Go, go. And so we're making a demonstrative video where Jack is putting them between his pectoral muscles. Okay. And go. And then titty fucking the needle. But how long is this dick? (laughs) That's what I'm saying. That's really long. Also, most dicks, it doesn't go straight up. It's kind of an out situation for some people. (laughs) Not all. There you go. You're happy. I saved it. I'm going to do it when it, when when the episode's live. Yeah. We're going to put it in the description for the show. I love how like Lily, hold on. Our next guest, Lily's here and she doesn't have headphones and she's like, the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) Oh my God. I just realized. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I think it's been the weirdest thing ever. She's old. She's only like, what are you doing with these knitting needles? And all I hear is you being like, so her titties. But no, so she's, she's saying crazy. she's going up as, as she said, as we've got some keywords here, 
as she's going up and down with her, as she's like using her mouth, or whatever, she's also going up and down with her boobs. <gasps> oh, I just realized something. We're missing the whole position. Okay, so what, okay. Is he lying down? Yes. That's what it is. Because then there's titty drop. Yeah. There's a graze if you're lying down. Uh, uh, yeah. There's a wait, graze. But if she's going up and down. No. She's still going up and down. Yeah, I think he's lying down. He's lying down, but how are her boobs still touching his dick if her mouth is also touching his dick? Maybe it's like a longer hand <laughs> motion. <laughs> a full. So he, is he laying down and you're kneeling? Full, like, like on the ground? No, no, no. I'm saying like you're he, over, over, him. Over, over, him. over him. Given the eyes. <laughs> that's Those eyes? Position. <laughs> that's my suggested blowjob position. <laughs> it's so inquisitive. It's so much like, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing this. You gonna come? Do you see this is, gonna come? <laughs> this is as know. good as it's gonna get. I'm down here. You never wanna have sex Check with me. In. That's what you've learned. You will never wanna have sex with me. Shut your legs a little bit. Because why am I where am I kneeling? All right, so for reference for reference, uh Arden is the guy in this scenario. Obviously. So if I, <laughs> your legs should be like, no, like for, your legs should be like further down. Really? Oh, oh, like, oh, oh. Are you like, saying like here, like? No, where are your boots? Like How are your boots? Yes. Wait. Well, that's what I'm no, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, You're giving. Like, yes. 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 Yeah. There we go. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. The boots. Yeah. Wait. The boots. Yeah, Hold like, on. I gotta do this one handed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, wait. Let me get in a better crazy. position here. You know what I'm saying? It's sort of a crazy. Look, 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 look. See? And then you were. There's like a crazy. I'm going to break my neck. I mean, that too. This girl is fucking flexible. But I think like, that's I think you need to. Well, you can't do it because your arm is messed up and it has to be more like that. That's a push up, though! Know, but it's still oh doing God. the action. I just, I don't understand how, the, I still don't get how this works. But think about this. Okay, think about him. I wish this was a fucking video so I could like make you mount me and we could see what this looks like. Literally, I mean, um, literally imagine laying. We can do it. <laughs> okay, can we try this? Yeah. We're I gonna think have, probably be. They're going to do a demonstration. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Also, now I want this girl. We asked the other girl to send us a DM on Instagram of what drugs her boyfriend sold and where they lived. Right. This girl, <laughs> I want you. I don't need you to show me with a real dick, but I want you Draw. to show me. Draw a picture or show me with some a remote visual looking age. thing. <laughs> because we want to know if we're even remotely close. Yes. Because I kind remotely. of remotely. Right. <laughs> All right. I love the idea if we are you super explain. fucking off. Oh, remotely? We did it. We demonstrated with the remote. Yeah. You made me explain the joke. Hang on. Give me the floor. Okay. It, Jack wants the mic. Okay. Sorry, guys. I'll I was be back. Gonna... <laughs> we should explain. <laughs> we shot a small uh, clip. It was big. Uh, it was a lot. Big production. Yes. Like, we, we shot a small clip uh, where Arden laid on the ground and played the guy mm -hmm. uh, using well. using a remote mm -hmm. as the phallus. And then uh, Megan climbed on top to try to figure out how mechanically this was working. Mm -hmm. And then Mel, uh, fa thankfully, volunteered. <laughs> really stole the show. Volunteered um. and showed us the, the proper technique. And I think you cracked the code. I no. think so. I think she got it. I think so. so. Anyway, we're going to upload this clip somewhere because it's too funny not to. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Mel, you got bigger titties than both of us. That's, I, that's, 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 that's say, part of what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I was, like, I was thinking. <laughs> it was an I'm like in the in the middle. Yeah, like, no, yeah. you got titties, yeah. but they're you like titties, they're though. not big though. But you're like not you're not yeah. in the committee. Yeah, like <laughs> you can't sit with you us. You can't <laughs> sit with us. Damn it. So, but I also, I would love if we're just super fucking off and there's one way that's like super <laughs> obvious, that's like easy as hell. And we've like made, and she's like, you've missed made it. this way more complex Completely than it is. It. So. I still think it's something to do with the hands. But then how, is she just holding up with her core like the whole time? I mean, I am, I gotta say, mm -hmm. you can get pretty tantric. You can, but I'm just also wondering, this sounds like something that like is a part of her like routine <laughs> in which I'm like, you must not she need to work out. I think of sex as a workout. That's what um, I mean. Like her that's home, when I work out. Homegirl's definitely on that boat. <laughs> my bed is my gem. My bed is my gem. <laughs> so uh, actual things, sometimes when I'm having sex, I'm like, my ass is going to be so hard <laughs> after this. Like, I am working out <laughs> so hard. Just get them glutes. Core. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Who needs Pilates? He's like, you're enjoying this? I'm like, oh, am I? <laughs> look at my abs. I look amazing. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm so yoked. <laughs> We're going to wrap it up now, guys. Arden, yeah. thank you so much for... Here, take your sip. I'm going to talk about how great you are while you take a sip of that. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the podcast. Yeah, thank you guys for having me oh. on. Uh, can I, I crash your podcast? You can crash on my couch, couch. podcast <laughs> any day. Yes. Literally any day. We need to start having guests. You know, we've never had a guest on Crash on My Couch. We just started having guests. And it's only people that I, like, I'm friends with because I'm like, who's going to get on? Like, really, like, I need someone who's going to let me mount them and, like, pretend to be them. <laughs> I can't have any, like, any people that I'm like, oh, I don't know them. Because I'm going to be like, yo, can I pretend to fuck you Is that with cool my breasts? Or no. Or no. <laughs> Sign this NDA. I don't know. <laughs> It's like the small print was here. really weird. Yeah, they said on a remote, a titty fuck. Yeah. I was very confused. I got rectums. Yeah, but no, thank you for having me on. It was awesome. I'm I so love mad. just being able to talk about all this kind of stuff all the time. That's so good. Where can people find you across the internet and in real life? Social Ooh. security number. Ooh, good point. Yep. Last four digits are. <laughs> Is that the only part you know? Yes. Me too. 100%. That was the only one. That's the, 100%. That's yeah. the only parts that I need to know. Me too. Um, I text my dad anytime I need it. Oh yeah. Same. I'm one of those. Um, no, but you can find me on YouTube, Arden Rose, Instagram, Arden Rose, Twitter, Arden Rose. I have podcast, Crash on My Couch, if you would like more shit like this. Although Will, my boyfriend, is a lot more polite than me. Ooh. So. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. But he has a very melodious British accent, which is the fun part. Although he does say three as free. Frey. So if that annoys you, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can tell it annoys you <laughs> so much. No, it really doesn't. In fact, I think it's really cute. But either way, if you would like to listen to that, crash on my couch. Uh, it's a fun time. Um, yeah, Mr. Student by President season two coming soon. Uh, you can see me. You can see you. Yeah. Very soon. Oh, I don't even know this. Where can people watch that if they haven't watched it before? Uh, Go90. You can download the app. Yes. Um, it's delightful. It's and it's, it's free. free. It is free. And you can watch all of the all of the first season as well. If you want to go binge that before the second season mm -hmm. comes out. You're welcome, guys. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that's cool. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Amazing. Thanks for being on here. Thank you for having me. Oh, amazing. We'll Thanks. have to have you back. Please. Anytime you need someone to be, we're about be a dick to, for you. We're also about to rotate through all of the people I like really quickly. So they're just going to have to come back. <laughs> Anytime. Well, we'll have to do a tit for tat thing. Mm. Tit for <laughs> tit. <laughs> uh, you come over to mine. I love that. Yay. We should record this one with a camera next time too. People can see how much art and I have grabbed our boobs. <laughs> Such um, a good point. If you guys enjoyed this and you're like, yo, I want to hear my voice on the air talking about my titties, then you can leave us a voicemail at 310-694-0976. Yeah, that only took me 15 tries, but we're not including all of those other ones. Maybe we will. Um, and if you're an international caller, if you're British, if you're Arden's boy, if you're Will and you want to call in. And <laughs> will. You, hey, Will. Can you imagine him just like masking his voice trying to get on this? Hello! <laughs> I'm... I'm William. <laughs> nice I name. Like, from Max William. It's really indie. Max William. Very Pinterest. Very nice. I like it. His brother's name is like Forrest Houston, something like that. <laughs> very Pinterest. Apple Drive. Love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you guys can leave us a email. And so just record a voice memo on your phone, email it to Megan podcast at gmail.com and uh, we can play it on the air. That would be great. But again, make sure to keep your uh, problems concise, which I mean, it's hard. Everyone's telling you to downplay your problems. We're just telling you to talk about them with uh, enough context, but not so long that we forget the point of your call, which we didn't do this time. Yeah, this was good. This we was really did some great ones. Yeah. So um, we would love that. And if you're a follow-up caller, same thing, check in with us. If you have any feedback on other calls, if you have some input, if you know how to titty fuck with tiny tits, would love to know. <laughs> <laughs> would love, would to, love know. to know. <laughs> would love to know. <laughs> Please advise next steps. Um, yeah, awesome, guys. I will see you all in two weeks. Adios. I also want to start my new sign off for everything I do. I want to say adios, fuckers. But I spelled <laughs> adios wrong in an end card, and now no one will let me live in town. <laughs> That's perfect. This is, this is your way to like. This, yeah, I'm redeeming myself. Yeah, exactly. also, I literally defended myself five times before I saw the spelling error in adios, and there's only like five letters. And I was like, it's not spelled wrong. And How I was did like, you spell it wrong? Did you add an e? Thank no, you. I just switched, um, I switched something, an I and an O. I switched <laughs> them around. I d <laughs> It's yeah. French. On <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, guys. Goodbye.
Don't Blame Me is a production by me, produced and directed by Jack Ferry, associate producer Melissa DeMons, edited by Melissa DeMons, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and music by Giacomo Picasso and Ryan Hunter. I will see you guys in two weeks, and don't blame me if your life bursts into flames before then. (laughs) 